Drive to go, go go. Good evening, everyone. We give you a very special episode of Drive Go Go today. I'm Koichi Kojima, and I'm accompanied by the lovely Reina Akikawa. It's here. nice to be here once again, Kojima-san. So, what are we covering today's episode about? I hope it's not some family hatchback again like last time. <laughs> Today is a very special episode covering the Wang and Midnight Maximum Tune 2013 tournament in the Philippines. Reina Chan, you've heard of this game, right? Yes, it's very popular actually, and it's not just because we're in it. <laughs> well, to get things rolling, we have a special bold host who was there in the tournament itself. Miyogi san, if you please. And yes, this is an iPhone that I'm using. It's loud, I know you can't hear me. But now we're gonna be interviewing a quick interview with the finalists. So let's get to it. Anyway, yeah, I'm here with one of the Team Crow's uh, entry finalists. Uh, we have Kirby, also as Kirby and Chamko. So, um, uh, mind if I call you Kirby, is that okay? Alright, so Kirby, um, what will be your battle strategy for this tournament? Patience. Patience. So, patience. And did you do any changes to your RX-8? Um, so you're keeping it the same way like you owned my butt last time. Alright, anyway, we'll be rooting for you as well. We wish you the best. Thank you. All right, now I'm here with the section with Team MRS, one of the finalists, Jekat. Yeah, so um, Jekat, uh, congratulations again for coming to the finals. So uh, what do you think is your battle strategy for this tournament? I'll put subtitles, don't worry. <laughs> anyway, so did you make any changes to your EVO preparation for this? Okay, Okay. <laughs> and yes, the one at the back is one of the uh, founding fathers along with Jack out of Team MRS as Twix. He was also in the semis. And I know I can hear myself. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hey guys, I'm here with one of the developers of the Wagon Mix and Maximum Tune for tournament. Um, I'm Mr. Right if I can um, uh, ask for your name. Yeah. All right, nice to meet you, Miss Ruby. So you're one of the head organizers of the Maxi Four Tournament, is that right? All right. Um, was this um, this wasn't approved by Namco or it wasn't given with Namco's consent? It's just between the boundaries of time zone, is that correct? Yes. Uh, internally, we uh, we had to set an event for this is our first in quarter event. So we need to set an event for this year. So far, this is the first. I see. Well, pretty much no problems naman with um, what I heard from the eliminations, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. And um, for this one, uh, do you think um, after this tournament, there will be even more Maxi 4 tournaments coming up? Uh, for now, we have no lineup yet if merong part 2. But for now, siguro kung merong uh, bagong version ng Maxi 2, then that's a possibility that magkakaroon na lang ng another. Uh, so far, we don't know either if we're gonna do uh, international tournament for this. As of now, ito muna yung plan for, for this. Ito muna. Kapag sabi natin na international patch ng Maxi 4, kasi may parating na patch with Zona na yung Japan, yes. magkakaroon ulit kayo ng tournament for that new patch? Hopefully, we're hoping for that. Oh. Ah, okay. So, uh, makakatanggap kayo ng mga third party request ng mga tournaments. Halimbawa, um, kami yung mag-propose, kami yung mag-arrange. Pero with the cooperation of time zone, will that be alright? Yeah, sure, why not? But it depends uh, for the evaluation. We have to evaluate first if we can support it. But if it's for like fun, for kids, and for the for this, yeah. Sure. Yeah, pretty much something on the same line as uh, Maximum Tune 4. Will that be awesome? Yeah, as long as we carry the game machines inside the time zone, then why We have a chance! We have a chance for the Speed Legend Tournament coming up on late, on late 2013. Anyway, thank you very much again for your time, Miss Ruby. Um, uh, you can just call me JD. I have too many names. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have too many names. But in the internet, they just call me Miyogi. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'll leave you be. And very much, it's not starting yet, so we'll just um, ask around with the other developers. All right. So, Miyogi san. What are the mechanics of the tournament there? There are a total of 12 participants here with me, and they'll be divided into three sets of four. They'll race at six randomly picked stages with HP levels ranging from 760 to 830. Six stages? Hmm. 
That sounds more like an endurance race. I'm sure everyone's fit and old enough to last those races. According to the list of people who participated, there seems to be around four or so among the twelve who happen to be younger than the rest, with one of them being around at just their early teens. Eh? And if the list serves me right, that youngest one is the lone representative of one of the popular teams in the area. Just goes to show you that age really doesn't matter in the field of racing. Wow, that really is amazing! So Miyoki-kun, what else is there that makes this even stand out? What surprised me was that if you heard of Team Akuma by numbers, they are the most dominant team in the tournament. They compose nearly half of the entire list of finalists. Wow, that seems quite a lot! And from that fact alone, I can see from which team the champion will emerge from. So Miyogi-san took the liberty of recording a few of the many battles that happened during the tournament. So we now bring you to our segment called... Did I move battle to feature? The players were divided into three sets with four players each. They are to race in a specific track with a specific HP setting based on a draw lot system by the staff. Ranking is on a point system basis, with the top two highest scoring players move on to the next round. The first round was set at long in line with combatants Lewis, Mivek, Arzak, and Kirby in the Hakosuka, Evo 9, FD, and the RX-8 respectively. The FD took the race up to Oi, which brings them headed towards Daiba, leading them to Siwan's Ginza area. Mivek is actually taking the run seriously and is ready to defend it even against Arzak who happens to be his teammate. And there's Arzak with a successful block against Lewis as they enter Oi with Kirby attacking a little too early on the first hairpin, only to get pinned by Lewis yet is able to catch up due to the early wall tap. The Kirby RX-8 overtook at the right spot and seems to have an extremely good block against Lewis Hakusuka. The RX-8 seems to be putting up a decent fight against the other two Group A machines. As a rotary user myself, I'd have to commend him. They're running at 830 HP, right Miyogi-san? That's right, Reina. And you can tell by their skill alone how well they were able to control their machines at such a dangerous setting. The Hakosuka is slowly being left behind by the other two newer cars as they head towards Hamazaki JCT. But Lewis was not being left behind as Boo still applies and he instantly recovers all that speed lost in Daiba Straight Roads and was able to close in on all three combatants. Kirby however was not gonna let his post get lost that easily and blocks Lewis giving him no room to pass as Mivek leans to the left lane directing everyone to C1. Mivek did a smart move to let go of the lead and gave it to Arzak who was behind Kirby who did an aggressive entry then got pinned on the outer wall by Mivek. Lois was forcing Mivek to stay behind and tries to keep second place to himself, but that Evo 9 was too rigid to let the unstable Hakusuka keep its position and was able to bypass him along with Kirby, who was following the E9 from behind at Tokyo Tower. Then, we get into the most dangerous part of the Shutoku. The C1 Outer Loop. Running it at 830 HP with barely enough grip makes this a very scary battle. They made it look so easy, especially given that they were running at C1. I guess they might have trained long in lots around C1 with that kind of setup. I can't say much for Lewis, but it looked as if the race was narrowed down to a three-way battle where the deciding factor was which side of Edo JCT would they take. The lead was being traded between Mivek and Arzak at the halfway point of C1's Kasumi Gaseki tunnels as by boost again, Lewis was able to catch up to them. Arzak going on the aggressive and blocking Mivek, only not anticipating what's coming from behind. Kirby did an amazing overtake against Arzak and Mivek and secured his lead all the way to Genza with a large enough gap to be certain of his victory. I still couldn't believe that Kirby is actually a kid. A lot of players were actually rooting for Kirby to win it. Even I was shocked to see him pull that last second attack off. And at the last instance, Mivek hoping to catch Kirby by surprise but goes too wide and missing his chance, securing Kirby the victory. But we need to take note that his rivals are extremely skilled and they're older than him. 
Miyogi, you didn't get other footage from round 1 after that, did you? After that round, the other 3 players of the first set were able to memorize Kirby's battle strategy and movements, then used it against him. That's how highly skilled his rivals are. Shame he didn't get to the finals. The ones who passed were Mivek and Arzak. I still gave my congratulations to them though, followed by an interview with Mivek. It was an endurance race of sorts, right? I mean, six consecutive battles against highly skilled rivals? It really feels as if you're in the professional circuit. <laughs> Back when I was part of Zero at Sakuba, I felt the same tension. But you're still older than Kirby that time. I don't see how similar your situations are. <laughs> now let's get straight to the second set. The second set was composed of Carl, Shay, Jekat, and Onins using the RX8, R32, Evo8, and R35 Spec V. Someone in an R32? Now this is surprising. What horsepower were they running on? Surprisingly, they were running at 815, and I can see where this is going as things are going to get rough. Too much understeer in a course, demanding cars to turn as much as they could. Hakone at 800 seems to be the ultimate challenge of control for every Wang and runner. Power alone was massive enough, too much even for the likes of Hakone. Wait, is that 32 pulling away that much? Amazing! Zay seems to be using the R32's full cornering potential. I was honestly hoping for that RX8 to build that gap. Jay happens to be one of the top runners of Team Akumin, but his movements alone, Hakan seems to be his comfort track. But in an R32, that's a very impressive feat. And to think it would outlast the RX8 in its own field of specialty. Jekka, the Evo Wave there who I was rooting for, was having some trouble dealing with the R35. It is a surprise for me to see the Wangan mass of the 80 Supra use an R35 in this battle. The R35 is heavier than the R32, but using its weight in a race like this does have its advantages. The RX8 though was fighting back against the R35, yet only for him to see the big gap made between them and the leading two. Well Reina chan things are about to get more interesting as we hit one of the highlights of the race. What do you mean? Take Shay's R32 out of the picture and focus on Jackass Evo 8, why don't you? Okay, but I don't see how this is. What in the world? Pushed both by the RX8 and the R35 with the grass pocket, then got sent airborne? Everyone was shocked at what they saw. Here, let's take a slow mo in that segment and listen to the crowd. Guess you can say. That is the highest angled throw up in MT history! Well, that's what we call it, Kijima-san. I would scream myself if I saw that live! If that were real, it would have ended the same way with the shida san Then there's Carlo who caught up to Shay's R32 and took it off at the last hairpin. This is bad. <laughs> How can you say that? Whoever leads in a close race at Hakone is bound to place last. Are you talking about the roundabout before the goal? So that's what you mean? The R32 caught up and trapped the RX8 to a wall. Well, by that side alone, the lead was secured to Shay. Though everyone was focused on Jacket's awesome comeback after that airborne scene. <laughs> I would also root for that Evo if I was there. Same here. <laughs> Shay came in with first, and Jacket with that amazing recovery gained second, followed by Onins and Carl. Unlike the first set though, Miyogi made mention that this set had more interesting battles. Either if it's because of Jackass and Onan's presence, according to him, but why don't we see it? Then roll the clip, Kojima-san! Don't keep us all waiting! <laughs> the game did come out on the same stages as that of set 1's first round, but let's skip towards Ginza and show why this race too was a featured battle. Let me guess, it also is at C1? And I take it that the demon's been awakened? You both are right. With Carl leading, we can see where the attack point will be. Carl seems to be an impulsive player who wants an immediate first place, but like here he got pushed to traffic and instantly lost his lead. It actually looked as if Carl wishes to take it to the outer loop earlier, but his response time against that swerving R2 was a little bit off. Shay takes the lead once more and tried to keep Jacket at bay with Onins helping him from behind. Look at that R35 at Jacket's screen! It's as if he's playing pinball with it! Then came a surprise by both R drivers to us all. Sometimes we could even say that hitting traffic is a good thing. 
How is that going to help? After Shay and Onus hit the trucks, it was enough to block any lane that Jacket would pass through. He ended up hitting Onus rear which slowed him down. Everyone seems to have a stable gap in between each other and you said there's another part here where everyone was so excited over the race. Skipping towards the final stretch at Kasumigaseki, Jacket once again made a huge comeback against Shay and Carl, securing another second place with Onus taking the gold. I have to admit, that race was pretty exhilarating. Despite all the crashes, it kind of was an interesting watch. <laughs> Shame though, even Jackat didn't make the cut as Zay and Onan tag teamed each other against Jackat's E9. On the last round, that Evo could have joined the semi-finals, but the two R drivers saw this coming. I'm sure if they didn't, we could have seen more of Jackat's impossible feats and antics in the semi-finals. <laughs> I'd agree with you there, Reyna. Before we head on to the final set's highlight battle, here's Miyogi with set one's finalist for a one-on-one -on -one interview. All right, guys, Miyogi here again, and I'm here with one of the now one two three hold on, hold on. Match. They will be using the now they, they can hear us anyway. Anyway, I'm here with and one of the we will be ones who got into the second stage. We have um, Carlito Abellano Jr., also known as Mivek. Is that correct? Yeah, the Mivek Evo 9. So, congratulations again for getting into the semifinals. So, how did you feel when you when you were sure that you were able to get into the um, next round? Racers, Nervous. Good luck. Nervous. First, for first, the uh, I'm on the level. Yeah, I'm on the level. I'm on the level. I'm on the level. I'm on the level. So, you think your battle strategy was very effective? You were able to keep your lead amongst all the others. Yeah, yeah no, no, I noticed that it was very stable. Anyway, uh, congratulations again, and uh, we hope to see a good race on the second stage. It's a shame though that he can't stop the event host from talking. I could barely hear what Medic was saying because of him. You can just call that impeccably bad timing. Well, he didn't have to repeat where the race is and what HP they're running on twice, right? <laughs> Anywho, it's time to see the highlight battles of the third round. The last set of the quarterfinals were Rockstar, Mafia, CJ, and Mines, using the Impressive Spec C, RX8, the JDBC STI, and the Evo 8. I guess the Impressive entries are enough to balance out the Evo entries? <laughs> it's a good contrast, actually, and truth be told, we've yet to see any good Impressive players given that most players are always Evo this and Evo that. The GDBC seems to be the most popular Impresa out of Subaru's lineup. This is actually round 4 given that we were interviewing Mivek and the others during the first 3 rounds. Rockstar, the one featured here, happens to have 2 consecutive first places and a second place in the first 3 rounds. I noticed that the track they're on is not at either Kojori or Tokyo. Where is that if I may ask? That's at the Fukuoka Expressway, Reina-chan. Both Rockstar and CJ seem to be very confident with their Fuku runs. Given this is the 4th round, Rockstar has his confidence very high. And that RX-8 driver seems to be a tad bit pushy if you ask me. At the end of the 4th round, Mines actually kept the lead and upon seeing Mafia catch up, he deliberately braked and made Rockstar place third. And now you're showing us round 5 with the Nagoya speed ring, is that right? After Rockstar placed third, he starts out too aggressive at the beginning and was fourth early on the race, but he didn't seem that troubled with losing the lead. Maybe he was waiting for a good moment to strike. It's more like he was following his own pace. Looks like he switched to in-car view. Would the view change make any difference? Frankly, an in-car view was more risky given you hitting the walls are relatively high if you're not used to it. But your corner entry seems to come out better. Early on when Rockstar was using the in-car view, he was able to increase the gap against the other three before boost kicked in after that hard right. If you look closely at his advantage gap at corner exit, where you'd normally catch up by a boost, Rockstar was able to increase it. This may be one of the benefits of the in-car view, but like how Rockstar showed, you'd had to have good course knowledge and know how near you should be before you see sparks, aka hitting the wall. Right now you can see his rivals gaining on him on the straight. If he had to hit the sedan, he could have kept his lead from CJ. That wasn't a side impact, was it? It looked more like a 3 fourth shot impact given how quickly the Black Impreza kept up. 
He was so close to getting the lead too. Too bad he didn't make it in time, given he also hit a truck after that hairpin. On the final straight, Rockstar tried to secretly steal the lead from CJ but he came in too close to his side for CJ to notice and blocked him then and there. That was a very close the end right there if he hadn't blocked mine's overtake. Nagoya may look simple on the outside, but in the battle, the course isn't your problem nor your attack point. Reina, would you mind explaining a little bit to everyone about the Nagoya speed ring? Sure. The Nagoya speed ring is shaped like a 4x3 square with a total distance time attack of 15 kilometers. It may look easy at first glance, but the route greets you with uneven road conditions and up and down ramps at most of them. The four corners range from two lanes to as much as three wide lanes, where the key is how fast you can come out of the corners without hitting the walls. The Higashi Bitsuyan exit is the most narrow of the three S-curves Nagoya has. And with traffic interfering, the line you take is what you say if you raise your gap higher and get hit and lose your lead. Back to you, Miyogi-san. Hey guys, welcome after a short commercial break. It's me, Miyogi, and I'm here with um, uh, John Kama, aka Rockstar, the first placer on the elimination of the grand finals of the tournament. Now, John, um, you realize that you might be pit, pit up against two Team Akumas, so what will be your um, battle strategy for this? Are you going to uh, engage with a uh, two uh, uh, 2v1 battle during the semi? Just play and focus. That's all. Just play and focus. Um, we, we'll be teaming up against um, Nivek and uh, Mines. Both are using Lancer Evolutions. Do you think your Impreza will have a chance? Yes. Alright, it's good to know. Confidence there, people. Confidence in an Impreza. Less known compared to an Evo, but we believe he will be the one to come out on top. Anyway, we wish you the best. I hope you get into the finals. Rockstar is the second youngest among the finalists, isn't he, Kojima-san? Perhaps maybe next to Lewis, but seeing him reach the semifinals sure is one amazing achievement. The video featured now was Rockstar's final chance at redemption on the semifinals, given that Mivik and Mines were both teaming up against him. That's as horrible as the R200 club! Perhaps, but you should know, Reina-chan, that he's the only non-Team Akuma member who got in, so it's fairly easy for the Evo drivers who they should take out. Before this vid actually, Reina-chan, his past five battles were either third or second. That's quite a shame. After seeing his quarter-final races, I was actually rooting for him. <laughs> Honestly, I was expecting him too to get into the final four. He had an amazing run there, the Heiwajima toll gates, as he was only a few millimeters away from getting trapped by that truck and ultimately losing his lead. That takes a lot of concentration there. Let's look at it in slow motion. And he seems to be trail breaking a lot at corner entry. Looks like he's learning much from his rivals. He immediately gets in front of his opponent and absorbs the impact, converting it to speed. What's the benefit from trail breaking actually, Kojima-san, Miyoga-san? When you trail break at a high speed corner, you immediately fall onto your rivals right of way, giving you a chance to make them fall back further and at the same time securing your position as during the time when your rival enters a corner, the inertial movement renders them motionless in that split second until the car responds to immediate counter steering after the apex. I see. No wonder he's using a lot of the Meshidome. Just look at how he was able to fend off mine to attack head on towards him. Sure, it's effective at wide corners such as that and a few high speed narrow ones like a Daiba, but they can easily be countered with a little deceleration or intentional understeer. Ouch! Looks like Mivik had that one covered and overtook at the right moment. And he nearly fell for a trap there at Ginza. Nearly! Why don't we look at it again in slow motion and see how far he was able to avoid the impact? Although it was a near miss, the crash connected and it's a shame he wasn't able to recover from that. It already looked as if Team Akuma was ready to seal the deal. Even if he did play second, because of the multiple third places earlier, it wasn't enough to catch up to Mivek or Mines, who were give and taking the podium goal to each other. Okay, so that was the uh, full coverage of the Wagamin Master Tune 4 tournament. We won't be staying any longer for the finals, because you know we already expected who the winner will be, and it's going to be just a team um, event last session. So anyway, but we do uh, 
congratulate the efforts of all those who participated, like Jacket from MRS, Rockstar, one of the Wanderers, um, Team Mafia. And we're giving our advanced congratulations to any member of Team Akuma, whoever wins the tournament. So anyway, this is Miyogi saying goodbye, and we bring you back to your drive -o. Go, go! Thanks for the full coverage of the tournament, Miyogi. Too bad you didn't stick around for the finals, though we all have a pretty clear picture as how it would turn out. Looks like this was another win again for Team Akuma. But it'll only take a matter of time before someone steps into the fray and finally takes the gold from them. Not that I want to see them lose, but everyone has a fighting chance in winning if they have good concentration and support. Akuma had the numbers down, so it was easy for their team to secure the wins. I bet even if you did join the tournament, your FC would still not be enough given the type of races you're up against. You can't even keep your foot past 300 kilometers per hour to that Devil Z. <laughs> we'll see you next time! Here on... Do I do go go! go! go!